everyone here back for round one with our sweet sweet blue white control deck we're just going to keep on the draw um i mean even if he has an aggro deck we're okay if he has another control deck we're going to be okay uh, if he has a mid-range deck that's kind of where our deck uh succeeds so much right is we can just go way over the top of the mid-range decks and uh with the meltdowns and the privileges and stuff i'm pretty confident that we'll be able to deal with the aggro deck so we're just gonna play our construct here and we are 100 percent willing and ready to trade with his dund operative and bottom we already have five lands we have two constructs um i mean we're bottoming all the lands at this point because we're at some point i would imagine going to get into the amount of lands that we need so i'm not worried about it right now but uh you know the next card we play is going to be either Mechanic or Construct. Again, our Scries are slightly better, so I actually don't mind plays here where we play Aviary, Me Aviary Mechanic to bounce Construct to replay Construct. I don't mind plays like that. Oh, wow. Well, that's just great. So now what do we do? So now there's actually a reason to play Mechanic to bounce Construct to let our opponent think that we're like short on lands or short on creatures or anything and have to replay it so that he empties his hand on the board and then we can fumigate and then we can fumigate with some creatures in hand we could also just, just play another construct right now and uh, not have to worry about that yeah i'm just gonna play a construct right now and next turn we can go for the mechanic play if we want to we're going to top this or bottom this? I think bottom this. I think we just want gas. Hold on, I'm going to be telling you what our opponent did. It looks like he topped. So if he topped a creature, that's not a big deal. If he uh, topped a spell, that's not a big deal. If he topped a fourth color of mana, also not a big deal. If he puts this in the air, we're not super worried about it sweet uh sweet foil aether hub i imagine it's worth like a ticket or two we might have actually passed this this might be someone that was in our pod yeah fumigate is going to get them that is for sure if he doesn't fly it we're obviously blocking if he flies it we can't block uh next turn no matter pretty much no matter our draw our plan is right our plan is mechanic bouncing a construct and then having ether meltdown up now this play is a little weird and the reason i'm going to say it's weird is because a lot of people are going to say hey sam if you just wanted to have two creatures out um why would you have the mechanic get fumigated instead of a construct get fumigated well we don't have any of our bombs yet um and that's kind of what we need to win right we're not going to win with constructs and mechanics and blade masters we're going to win oh wow we're going to win with ancients and gear seeker serpents etc EU construct makes the gear seeker serpent cheaper also it helps us find that um so yeah also like i don't know what our opponent is. i mean i guess our opponent could assume something was up because he knew we could have played the construct and didn't but i mean that would take a lot of uh a lot of forethought on his part we could try to get some damage in here problem is, is he's just going to gain two life but i don't think that matters so we're just going to get some damage in here oh wow we just get four in that's so sick all right now we gain a drillion so that was sick um now we have the meltdown we have meltdown plus blade master or pioneer plus construct we have whatever you want oh, okay so he's suddenly a 13 which is not a super high life total i mean a gear seeker serpent can deal with that pretty quickly um we're just going to construct and then pioneer here uh, he is clear. I mean, he missed a land on his turn five, but then hit it again. This is the place where we could top, but we have six lands, so we're only missing Ancient. That's the only card we can't cast here. So I'm just going to bottom it. 
Uh, sorry for the airplane flying over me. I don't know why that would be happening, but I guess it is. Uh, he topped. We're going to Pioneer. I wonder what he's splashing. He might have been splashing that Harness Lightning that went around late. Didn't see any Welding Sparks. Saw a few Chandra's Pyrohelixes go late. So he could be splashing any of those. Um, something I kind of have to be careful of here is Pyrohelix, but if he helixes this and Servo, then that happens anyways. I think I just make this bigger. I just want to beat down. Yeah, it also makes my Meltdown better, because if he has a 3 toughness creature, um, I can keep my thing back, and then when he attacks, Meltdown it and block it with the Pioneer. Um, so, you know, I mean, it kind of makes a bunch of stuff better, although I guess I could do that with the Blade Master anyways, but... Alright. So, he definitely stole some of the Prisms. I I'm gonna assume this guy was in our pod. Just because of the quickness with which we got paired against him. And an essence extraction. Yep, he was definitely in our pod. That is for sure. Uh, we're gonna just gonna get in here. Player two guys. Scry everything to the bottom that's not a serpent, an ancient, or a gear hulk. Um, something that a lot of people forget to do that I am not going to forget to do because I'm just reminding myself is to set a stop on my upkeep so that I can use this theorist on my upkeep. Um, yes, it has summoning sickness now, but as soon as I cross my tap step, it loses summoning sickness. So before my draw, I can scry, um, you know, just to kind of help my draw out a little bit instead of having to wait till the next draw step uh, to scry. So. Alright. Uh, Freighter is something that we can melt down. This is also one of the reasons we have malfunction in the deck, so we should be okay. I guess there's also an outside chance that at some point we malfunction a prophetic prism, but that doesn't seem very likely. Did he top tap his prism? Yeah, he might have. Yeah, making mana is kind of hard sometimes. Alright, so we killed our Blade Master with this to make us lose three. Wow. Um, just top. Yeah, okay, so I lied. I mean, after we played the Freighter, we obviously had to change our plan. So we're just gonna malfunction the Freighter all of a sudden and attack. <laughs> I said we were bottoming everything that wasn't a Gear Serpent or a Gear Hulk or whatever, but I mean, that obviously changed as soon as he played this. It's something that can kill us, so. Gotta be careful. I mean, Midnight Oil is good here. He's just gonna draw an extra card every turn. He was definitely in our pod. Bottom. Come on! That wasn't really what I was rooting for, but I guess it's not the worst thing ever. I mean, he's gonna be drawing two cards a turn. That being said, we have a lot of stuff that he just can't deal with. Um, so I hope we draw one of those things that he can't deal with, but he is going to be drawing two cards a turn for a while. Um, just kind of keep scrying. I mean, this is the last opportunity. I could put him on a three turn clock, but I assume at some point he's going to draw something. Um, do I bottom this? Uh, I guess it's a creature, so I just top it. It also gives us extra scry, so I can kind of remove more lands. Ugh. Tidy conclusions, yeah. Alright. Yeah, I mean, him drawing three cards a turn is definitely very- or two cards a turn is definitely better than us drawing one card a turn, so... That's gonna crush us pretty quickly. Ugh. Alright, so... He has something in his hand, probably a land. If it was anything else, he would have played it by now. Definitely bottoming this Aether Meltdown. And Creature. Well, that didn't work out as well. Oops. We're going to get one more shot at it, though, don't worry. Aether, yeah, I mean, Midnight Oil is pretty good here. As I said, it's very good in the late game in situations like this. Alright. 
Got a little Ibex going on here. All right, I mean, uh, Gear Serpent, Gear Hulk, Mastodon, something. Did I click it? All right, I mean, that's close, right? Uh, yeah. Uh, I mean, that's what happens, right? I mean, we put our <clears throat> we put ourselves in a position where we were pretty good to go unless he drew a bomb, and he just drew a bomb. So there's not much there's not much we can do. Uh, we're not going to Aether Melt on this because we don't have to yet. And most of the cards that we can draw that are very good deal with this pretty well. He obviously just has a land in hand, so he's going to discard it and lose a life. You rarely die to this card unless you play it too early, so nothing to worry about there. And we get a Privileges. So we could Melt down this and then look to Privileges something else. That's possible. Um, keep in mind, like of our 20 cards, we have... One Serpent, one Mastodon, one Ancient, one Gear Hulk, one more Privileges, a Meltdown we bottomed, and some lands. I mean, it's pretty much what we have. I'm just going to Meltdown this. Like, the dream is to get that to attack into a Gear Hulk, but I don't see how that's happening at this point. So, we also have our Acrobatic Maneuver still in our deck. All right, I mean, we got a Blade Master, I guess. Oop, tapped an extra land, not on purpose. Hmm. I mean, this is where Fragmentize would, of course, be good, but we don't have it. Um, Yeah, I'm just going to let him discard his land, go to seven. Yeah. We don't even mind paying seven for it this time. All right, I mean, he has to draw a removal spell here. Or else we have a good shot at killing him. I mean, he's drawn, what, it looks like seven extra cards or something with Midnight Oil, and we're still gonna, we still will possibly be able to kill him. All right, that wasn't a removal spell, so that doesn't kill us. If he puts a counter on it, that's a very good revoke privileges target as well. I imagine he's putting the counter on, seeing that it's a four turn clock if he does, and a or a five turn clock if he does, and like a seven turn clock if he doesn't. What? I'm obviously just blocking here. If he has a trick, he has a trick. If he's like built the smash, he's going to use it anyway, so... Like, he's in a very difficult spot. Yeah, okay. Oh wow, he's in a super tough spot now. Can I afford to pay 6 to do this though? Or do I just have to attack? And eat the servo? That's so tough. So what happens if I pay 6 to attack and then I revoke his chief? And then he can attack for a 4? All right, I mean, I'm going to try to kill him here. Let's go team. Oh, so nervous about this one. Uh, there was also like a longer game line we could have took it. We could have taken that involved. Uh, how, what was his plan if we just blocked with our Geese Rika Serpent? I guess he didn't have one. But, alright, I mean, we did it. There's a longer game line we could have taken that involved us trying to deck him. <laughs> but, I mean, that was probably not as good. So, what do we do here? I mean, Malfunction's obviously good. Is he playing an aggro deck? I guess, right? So, we kind of have to put in the second eager construct. But what do we take it out? We have enough top end? We have to have enough top end, right? We just kind of ran into it. Built the last is pretty good. Um, 
with the theorist and the two constructs, can we get away with one less land on the draw? And play another construct? I think so. This construct just kind of helps us uh, have more action against aggro. Uh, you could make a point for bringing another Gear Secret Serpent because, like, oh, we got him so low, whatever. But that had also a lot to do with the fact that he had Midnight Oil. He's not going to draw Midnight Oil every game, so... Um, yeah, all right. I mean, this is the... I mean, we have to keep this on the draw, right? Ugh. Sorry, that was my... That was my gross that we didn't draw a land voice. All right, I mean... Whatever, can't use it now. Just drawn some four drops. I guess I'll get an attack in. I will say that he's in pretty good shape right now, because he hasn't... We also didn't see what he was splashing for. Again, I'm going to assume it's something like Harness Lightning, but I don't know for sure. All right, we did it. Um, This is a weird spot, because he's just going to do three to us, and there's not a lot we can do about it. That is a ridiculously bad-looking foil. <laughs> like, that. oh my god, it's such a bad foil. So, so, so bad. Yeah, gotta draw land here. Land here and probably play Pioneer. Yeah, that's not a land. Yeah, I, the thing is, it's two fours, a two, and your best card two lands on the draw. I don't know if we can mulligan that. I'm not saying this is a lost cause. We can definitely still win here. I mean, if we just rip some lands, we're going to be in good shape. Even against something like that, we're going to be in good shape. Um, we would kind of have to malfunction this, though. Huh. So what happens if we malfunction this, we take three again, and then our plan is to pioneer blocking this. Because if we, yeah, we can mouth this. <clears throat> then he plays another creature, crews this, and gets us way down. But then we play an Augmenter, and then we can kind of, like, block this into Oblivion. Hmm. So what we do just malfunction this. And then if he wastes his entire, yeah, okay. This gives us options. I mean, if he doesn't play a creature here, we can we can kind of turn the corner. We'd obviously just play Augmenter. Um, but then we have blockers for Errata Express. Don't have it. Alright, he didn't have it. I mean, he's going to draw some extra cards, but... Who, who's not going to draw some extra cards? Um, is there actually a reason to do this and get him for 5? No. That's way too early to be on that train. Uh, servos so that we have extra things to block the express and yeah gotta gotta try to do it here all right so if he wants to I'm in for I'm in for a trade I really don't mind a trade here if that's what he's trying to do I do mind that he has midnight oil all these games there's not a lot we can do about it Alright, I mean, he had Subtle Strike, so he can make this a 9-7 and kill this, and then we can't kill it. But, if he doesn't have Subtle Strike, I recommend just doing something like this. Right? Because if he does have Subtle Strike, there's nothing we can do. But if he doesn't have Subtle Strike, this is what we do. If he doesn't have any kill spells, this is what we do. Or, do we just stay on plan, take a million... What's the other plan? Take a million and then play a Pioneer next turn and try to fight back? I don't like that other plan. Yeah, he has it. God damn it. Yep. Cool. I mean, any way to kill the Augmenter just kills us there.
Not a lot we can do. And here I think we're dead, but we might not be dead, so... Who knows? Um, just going to play a Pioneer with a Servo, obviously. And then let him eat us next turn. I mean, he definitely has like the card draw advantage. <laughs> that is, uh, that is for sure. We might have the power advantage, but he definitely has the uh, the card draw engine advantage here. Although last game he almost decked himself, but he didn't draw a Rod Express last game, so maybe that's why. If we have a counter like Disappearing Act, we might want to bring it in just to help deal with things like this and Midnight Oil. It's also the reason to have a second malfunction that we don't have. A Fumigate helps us a bit here. No, it doesn't. We don't have five lands. I lied. Huh, what's his plan? Yep, I mean, we're dead now. Okay, on to game number three. Oh, don't want to reveal my hand. And our draw would have been Fumigate, but that doesn't really do anything, so it doesn't matter. Built Alas is going to be fine here. Revoke Privileges could be good. We have three Revolutionary Rebuffs, which uh, don't counter artifact spells, but could counter the other thing, maybe. What can we do? Is this any good? So take out this. Add back in the 17th land on the play. Would Built Last have been good in any of those games? Not really. But Gear Seeker Serpent is pretty good. But now we're going to be clogged? And eh, we're already clogged here anyways. How good is Acrobatic Maneuver on the play? It makes more Augmenter tokens, makes more Pioneer tokens. Kind of gets us out of a block. I think I'd rather have another Revoke Privileges. He didn't seem to have any way to interact with those. Alright, I mean... Let's run it. Just adding more to our top end. Ugh. I mean, okay. I mean, now Torrential Gear Hulk's just a flash. 5-6 six for 6, but it's still pretty good. Alright. Would you like to play first? Yes. Would you like to keep this hand? Keep. It's a decent hand. I mean, it doesn't beat down, but it stops him from beating down. And it leads to our big things that do beat down, so... I shouldn't say it doesn't beat down, it beats down a little. Alright, he mold to 6 and put a card on bottom. All lands to the bottom, most spells to the top. This is kind of like giving him a way out of the mulligan. Yeah, he tops, so it doesn't really matter, but if he had bottomed, I would have felt bad. <laughs> that being said, it's still the correct play, even if he bottoms. If he plays an operative or whatever he plays here, especially if it's like a puzzle knot, it doesn't change anything that we do. This doesn't change anything, of course. Have to play an island here, or and not an island, eight planes here, so that we have double white next turn. And I mean... We're actually beating down at this point. Ooh. Again, just going to continue to beat down. Let's see what he does. If he blocks it all with... So if he just double blocks here, I think I just make Augmenter a 2-1 with two other 1-1s. One -ones. Um, we don't have Acrobatic Maneuver in our deck anymore, but, you know, but still, like, a 2-1 can block this, whatever. If he does this, then we might just make this a 4-3. Huh. What do we do? Counters or 4-3? Well, if we make it a 4-3, it's a double block. If we make servos, then we can attack with it, but he just blocks with his servo. I'm just going to put counters on it. 
He also can't die. Ah, uh, whatever. I mean, there are a lot of whatever. He can still extraction it, but yeah, I think this gives us uh, more playability later. Okay, that card is not named a Midnight Oil. That's fine. I'm just going to attack, maybe trade with the bigger servo. Maybe not. Is he just super nervous? Get in. Play this. Um, so unfortunately, Torrential Gear Hulk's not at his best here because one, we don't have an instant to flashback. All, all of our removal is enchantments, <laughs> which is kind of sucks. I mean, it's great in the decks with, like tight inclusions and stuff. It's not great here. And two, he's not going to really be attacking, I don't think. So I'm not going to be able to block very successfully. But maybe I will be able to pick something off. I'm going to attack here. I mean, is he ever considering not blocking and then alphaing? Oh, wow. He has to have something to... He has to have, like... Hmm. There's no way he's just chumping here. Alright. I mean, have Essence Extraction. Just don't Essence Extraction this one. Essence Extraction this one, and then attack with your servos. Oh, jeez. Alright, um... We're gonna pretend we don't have anything. He's hopefully going to attack. If he had tidy conclusions, he wouldn't have spent it, right? There's no removal. I mean, removal can get us, but no essence extraction or anything can get us. So we're safe blocking. The question is, does he have, like, tidy conclusions or something? I mean, that's a big train. Oh, uh, we're going to save it in our hand, though, I think. Does it make sense to use it here? <sighs> no, because if we play something with Death Touch, we want to be able to get through that. So obviously it just makes sense. Um, because we have him dead, we're going to try to scry and see what happens. Bottom. I thought I bottomed. I did bottom. Alright. Super close here. First match ever for seemsgoodmagic.com. And we might win it. And we do. On round number two. See everybody there. Thanks for watching.